Wireless Land Professionals Podcast, episode 158. Um, yeah, the sidekick was then born out of some of those pain points that our customers were explaining of, you know, not a long enough battery life to, to perform these surveys in an efficient manner and not enough power output, you know, and laptops, you know, coming out with fewer and fewer USB ports, um, you know, created all these different pain points that we had to kind of, um, yeah, come up with this new product. Wireless Land Professionals is a place to educate, inform, encourage, and entertain those involved in wireless lands. This Wireless Land Professionals podcast is an audio manifestation of these goals. Our host is a wireless land veteran, consultant, designer, and teacher, Keith Parsons. And now, the podcast for wireless land professionals by wireless land professionals. And we're going to talk about another one of the pages in the WM Pro's notebook. This one happens to be the RF coax connectors. Uh, very simply, we put on here a, just a visual picture of the different types of connectors you might be running across as a wireless LAN professional, uh, specifically so you can look and see the the naming convention we've used for things like male and female have usually been something that's obvious. It's the the big parts you see, but specifically in our world and in the, the connectors we use, the male and female is more about what the inside pin is doing rather than what the outside is doing. In fact, sometimes uh, the outside looks like it's female, but it's actually a male on the inside, or sometimes it's reverse. It's a female on the outside and looks like a male on the inside. So um, we need to to call them properly. We're going to be, we'll call them either jacks or plugs and you'll have a pin that's male or female. So we can have a male plug with a male pin or a female jack with a female pin and a whole bunch of combinations. And so we just gave you pictures of all these. So when you're looking, shopping, uh, reviewing hardware that you see on, on site or something, you can quickly review and take a look at it. If there's any other thing you'd like to add as a resource that you use on a, on a daily or a weekly basis on your work, just let us know and we'll add it to our next version of the notebook. Thank you. Let's get to know our colleagues and friends with a shared passion for Wi-Fi. It's time to search who is. Well, Jerry, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me on, Matthew. I'm uh, excited to uh, to be on. Yeah. So for those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. What's the world of Jerry looking like? The world of Jerry. Wow. That's uh, that's quite the Movie setup title, there. Almost. Yeah. Man, it sounds so exciting. I didn't realize I had that uh, that kind of title. Um, yeah. World of Jerry today is uh yeah, it's a it's been an exciting, you know, start to the year and you know, we're already over halfway through the year here, but uh, um, at the beginning of the year I changed roles within Ekahow and uh, went over to the product management side and okay. um, still, you know, even, you know, 6 plus months down the road still learning the ropes and stuff there, but really enjoying it and uh, you know, all the new challenges and that that come with that very cool so you're with eka how and um you've been with eka how how long now uh, it's been uh what about two and a half years already wow. it's uh yeah it's flying by but i've uh, been enjoying the ride with that transition and now two and a half years and uh job change within eka how what has changed about your perspective on wi-fi the industry maybe just even technically what things have you have you learned more about wi-fi or just what's changed Where's your perspective come from in the last two and a half years? Yeah, it's an interesting question. And, in, you know, thinking about even, you know, what the role changes of, you know, how that's kind of changed some of my perspective, you know, where previously, you know, prior to Echo, how I was an Echo customer for a number of years using the tool, you know, boots on the ground, designing yeah. Wi-Fi networks, deploying Wi-Fi networks. Um, and then, yeah, kind of changing, you know, going into a sales engineer role for a while and, you know, really just talking about Wi-Fi and the tools and, you know, you know, talking with our customers. But now my perspective is uh, more around uh, the features and, you know, the products themselves. And I'm really trying to see a bigger picture, right, of where the needs are in the industry, um, mm -hmm. you know, how we can improve products and, uh, you know, add additional features and functionality to the, the tools that exist today. So you're, you're, I guess, interfacing with guys who now are boots on the ground, what are some of the common things people are running into, are talking to you about, are setting schedules and 
appointments with you? Like, what are some of those common pain points that you're running into? Yeah, I mean, Wi-Fi is everywhere. So it's, yeah, it's been really eye-opening to see where Wi-Fi, you know, is being used. And, and just really the, the common theme is is about criticalness, right? Of just how Wi-Fi is becoming more and more critical. Yeah. And that's really driving the need on, you know, where my role is and where, you know, where I fit in is, yeah, figuring out how we can, improve the tools that are, are there today and, you know, continue to develop them to meet the needs that uh, our, our users and, you know, just the, the people that are on the ground running these networks day in and day out, as well as deploying these networks, you know, what tools do they need, what visibility do they need? Um, and then as Wi-Fi becomes more and more complex with all the new um, revisions and uh, enhancements and stuff to it, yeah, um, yeah the, the tools, you know, have to keep up with that as well. So it's a, a constant battle. Well, since we're talking at Kahau anyways, <laughs> um, Sidekick has uh, seems to be doing well. Um, I know there's always a waiting list, at least on our end, trying to get it to different customers and stuff. Uh, what's been the experience behind the scenes with the Sidekick and the deployment and the rolling out of all of that? Yeah, it's, you know, Sidekick was a, a unique product that, uh, you know, was driven by, um, you know, multiple facets, but, uh, you know, there was a need, right? So we needed to, as more and more spectrum was uh, becoming available to Wi-Fi, you know, we started increasing the number of adapters and things like that, that you needed to to survey with to try and capture all this information in a, in a reasonable amount of time. Um, But then that created other pain points of, you know, battery consumption and things like that. So um, yeah, the sidekick was then born out of some of those pain points that our customers were explaining of, you know, not a long enough battery life to, to perform these surveys in an efficient manner and not enough power output, you know, and laptops, you know, coming out with fewer and fewer USB ports, um, you know, created all these different pain points that we had to kind of, um, yeah, come up with this new product. With adapters on top of adapters. Exactly. Yeah. You you know, you've got all these, uh, you know, you've got MacBooks now that don't even have a standard USB port on them. Um, So yeah, I had to come up with a, a solution to all of that. And, you know, that's really where the sidekick was born from. But yeah, we didn't know, you know, how popular product was going to be. And yeah, really since day one, um, we've had a backlog of it and have been, uh, you know, it's been uh, on the product side, you know, a struggle to, uh, you know, address. I mean, it's a good problem to have, but it's a problem nonetheless. And, you know, it's something yeah. that, uh, you know, we're, we're working our way through and, you know, have a light at the end of the tunnel, but uh, not there yet. You, uh, before coming to Ekaha, where were you? Uh, so what was your journey into Ekaha? Yeah, good question. So my journey, I mean, it depends how far back you want to look, you know, when you're talking specifically Wi-Fi. The dawn of yeah, time. exactly. I mean, Wi-Fi, um, you know, I started getting interested in Wi-Fi as more of a hobby. and, and Yeah, and let's go, go there where you actually like, why did Wi-Fi even interest you and how did you get into yeah. that just kind of so kind of interesting i mean like it goes back to the days of uh i think it was uh, 802.11g is really when i first got interested in it of like hey there's some actually you know some speed to this there's some you know capabilities here that we can actually mm-hmm. do you, we can actually move some traffic you know wirelessly and um i ended up picking up like a, a linksys wrt 54g uh, router, you know, that's when I kind of got on board with the whole Wi-Fi thing. I, you know, used external antennas, so I was able to go online, buy an external antenna, and got really into this whole thing. Of uh, I didn't was this just like in your home, or was this actually in a uh, helping a customer no, no, or something? Is, or? Yeah, this is all hobby, like at my home. And okay. um, to be honest, like I didn't really have a lot of interest in the the Wi-Fi piece for my own usage. Like I was using a desktop computer. There wasn't really a, yeah, I had yeah. the house all wired up with ethernet so like to me i didn't really it didn't really appeal to me but i'm like hey you know what i've got you know some neighbors right so i ended up actually getting like a business internet connection for the house putting an external wi-fi antenna on the house like i didn't know anything about rf at this time or wi-fi or anything of the mechanics yeah. how it worked you know this was all brand new but you know i wanted to see how far i could actually take this wireless signal and actually was feeding wi-fi to uh, some of the neighbors across the street from my house 
Um, I had an uncle that lived across the street from my house at that time. So got him on board with that. And yeah, really just kind of justified all the expense of that by, uh, you know, charging people, you know, a small amount of money per month. And, uh, you know, that, that was my intro to, uh, to Wi-Fi. So entrepreneurial uh, ideas yeah, birthed your interest basically in Basically became my own, uh, you know, WISP, you know, wireless internet service provider. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this was way back of the uh, 802.11g days. But, yeah, that was, that was you know, like I said, it was all hobby stuff then. And, you know, I didn't know what mm-hmm. I was doing. You know, I'd crank the transmit power up as high as it could go. And, you know, I had really no understanding of how Wi-Fi worked. But, you know, made it work, you know, uh, tweaking knobs and and fumbling my way through it but um yeah kind of fast forward from there i stuck in it you know pretty much since the dawn of time you know as soon as i was out of school and even in school i was really into computers but stuck in it um the whole my whole career a lot of help desk type stuff and then started getting into actually went to school for route switch and um learning learning more that wired side of things and and the routing and switching and uh, that was kind of what I envisioned I was going to go into because this was still before Wi-Fi was really huge. And um, I didn't yeah. really have enterprise experience or anything like that. So I started out with that. But Wi-Fi was starting to get really big at that same time. You know, this was over over 10 years ago when I started that. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, um, Wi-Fi was getting pretty huge then anyways. But, yeah, they um, – Went to, you know, apply for a job and ended up getting hired on by a system integrator um, that was also a AP vendor. Um, the, uh, they were a um, value-added reseller of R. Um, so, yeah, we uh, um, uh, yeah got brought on to them. And because they were also a, a, a VAR for a AP vendor, um, we also, you know, they, they needed somebody to design wireless networks. So even though I kind of was brought on more for the route switch type thing, they had an immediate yeah. need for this Wi-Fi thing. And they just didn't really have anybody on staff that knew Wi-Fi. And even though I don't really know enterprise Wi-Fi at all, you know, I said, sure, I'll, uh, you know, uh, I'll be, I'll be that guy. So take me to that internal decision there because i know that there's people you know that you hear that story a lot like okay you're the wi-fi guy now you know you have a router at home was there a a moment as like sure i'll try this like who why not was there was it fear like oh man i I should do this i want to do this what was kind of going on when you were willing to say yes or kind of take i mean honestly a lot of it was you know it was me getting my foot in the door. Like th- this is, this was kind of what I needed to do to get my foot in the door. Right. So like, and you could recognize that, like I need to do something. I need to, this is an opportunity. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like this, this organization, I didn't have a lot. I didn't really have any enterprise experience at that point. And this company hired me on that's dealing with all enterprise type um, mm-hmm. gear. And it's like, you know, they're giving me this opportunity here, you know, I'm going to, say whatever to, you know, kind of get my foot in the door. And it's like, you know, it's, I mean, it was definitely interesting to me. Like, uh, you know, I, I ran my own wisp. Of yeah, course exactly. I can do well, of course, you know, I mentioned that stuff in the interview to, to show that there was definitely some interest there. But uh, yeah, so I ended up, you know, being brought on essentially as the wireless designer, um, great. given a bunch of Wi-Fi tools and, uh, you know, no training, you know, just pretty much handed these very expensive Wi-Fi tools and said, you know, here's what you need to do your job. And I had to yeah. basically figure it out from there. Was it like literally on the job or did you have a, a, a space, a time where you kind of played with those in a safe zone or did you go right out there and start learning oh, yeah. it by was, doing? It was like my second week on the job or something like that. I was at a, a customer site in like Nebraska or something like that. And I had like one other colleague that was with me that was uh, at least somewhat knowledgeable with the tools and, and mm-hmm. more knowledgeable than I was as far as Wi-Fi goes. But it was pretty much like, you know, here you're going to this customer site, you need to do a survey and uh, they're having some problems with their Wi-Fi and you need to figure out you know what's wrong with it and create a remediation plan. And, you know, it was like literally yeah, like the second week on the job. Like I, I, I think I was installing the tools on my laptop. You know, what, like, were, what was your list of tools back then? Do you remember what? Oh you yeah, started I was. Uh, off with? Yeah, I was using um, Air Magnet. Was uh, the first tool that I ever had exposure to. Um, yeah, I think I had the whole Air Magnet 
suite. Um, that's just what the company had at the time when I was hired on, you know, 10, 10 plus years ago there. Yeah. Uh, I guess, yeah, it wasn't 10 plus years that I was there, but yeah, it was probably about at least six or seven years ago there. But yeah, so I was given the whole suite, installed that and had to, you know, stumble my way through it and figure it out. And uh, yeah, while I was on site at a, a customer site, you know, basically and going through the whole process of figuring out how to use it. So it was a, it was a bumpy start for sure. Um, figured it out though. We did solve the customer's problem. You know, it, uh, probably took about twice as long as it should have. Um, but, uh, you know, stumbled their way through it, figured it out. At least you probably had a little bit of the, uh, the wizard behind the curtain. They didn't know any more than you did. So yeah. you were, uh. Yeah. They didn't know how long it should take. So, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, we fixed the we fixed the issue. We actually, um, you know, they were really happy with the results of it, and um, you know, hired us on to do a bunch more projects after that. Really, uh, that kind of set a, a chain of events there of doing a bunch more work for that uh, large customer, um, you know, really even internationally. And then, was it in that role and with that VAR for for a while until Ekahau, or did you take a? a different journey from there yeah that really uh kicked things off i was with that organization for um uh for about two years um okay and uh that really kind of set me on the whole yeah the the whole journey that i guess is kind of taking me where i am today but um yeah that was a big turning point and uh yeah started from there learning about you know so yeah as soon as i got all the stuff and i realized how over my head i was i'm like all right i need to figure out you know, some, some training or something to, to yeah. learn this stuff. Um, I went through the ruckus wise, uh, training. That was one of the first okay. training things that I was exposed to, um, through the organization that I was at. And I went through all that and, and learned a lot. That was really helpful to kind of, yeah, just kind of kickstart things. Um, then there was really three main things that I can think of that stand out to me, uh, if I was to give anybody, you know, something to, to get started on a journey. And the three main things that stick out to me was okay. the CWNP program, um, WLPC, and Twitter. Ah. Those were the three things that would definitely stand out to me as the, the biggest influencers on my career and my journey. Where are you on the CWNP uh, certification level now? Yeah, so CWNP, I've uh, achieved the CWNE certification, the, the Certified Wireless Network Expert. What's your number? Uh, 238. Nice. And achieved that, um, it was probably, I don't know, I guess less than a year ago now, but uh, yeah, um, a little over six months or so ago, I think I uh, obtained that. Um, but yeah, it was about a two and a half year journey for me from start to finish of the, the CWNP uh, program. Um, but yeah, I don't remember which one of those three things, CWMP, Twitter, and WLPC, which one of those came first. Um, but, uh, each one of those played a significant role, I would say in my, you know, journey and career. So those would be my three. That's really interesting. So we've got a certification training program, a conference, and then social media. Yeah. How did those interplay together to help move you along and strengthen you in your in your industry, in your career? Yeah. So CWNP, specifically the CWNA uh, certification was a, a huge one for me. So that's the, yeah, the, it's, you know, it's a great way to kind of break it down from there. You've got your training, your, your conference, and you got your social media. And I think each one of those adds a significant amount of, you know, value when I look at that to, to, to my career and my journey. So CWNP, that was, you know, that real structured training that I needed of, you know, just laying the groundwork of, you know, what Wi-Fi is, the mechanics behind Wi-Fi mm -hmm. and, um, you know, testing your knowledge, right? Having that certification and just building that confidence piece, right? So being able to take those exams, say, okay, yeah, check that box. I do, you know, uh, know that I meet this kind of level in the industry of this, this knowledge. Um, and yeah, the CWNA was, you know, a really good one for me because it gave me that That's broad great. understanding of, you know, Wi-Fi and, you know, just really to me opened up my eyes to how much I didn't know, right? The whole CWNA yeah. uh, process. And there's just so much content in that and it's so valuable and yeah, just really kind of set the, the course for where I wanted to go career wise. Um, but yeah, then from there, you know, somewhere in that process early on in the CWNP program, I found out about WLPC, probably got on Twitter and then heard about uh, WLPC. 
Uh, maybe even like reading CWMP, it mentioned something about Twitter. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure where I got on the Twitter kind of bandwagon thing, but um, I never used Twitter prior to being in Wi-Fi. And actually today, even still, I don't use Twitter for anything else other than really Wi-Fi. Um, you know, I don't use it as, you know, interacting. And how are you using it? How is it useful? What does it do for you? How do you interact with it? And, and what does that mean you're using Twitter for Wi-Fi for uh, yeah for Wi-Fi. Yeah, so to me, Twitter is uh, is my Wi-Fi news feed more than anything. Okay. Um, so that's you know where I stay up on top of Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi related events. Um, you know, uh, and just you know a lot of other wireless professionals and, and keeping up with them and interacting with them um, on there. But yeah, I would say more than anything, it's my news feed, right? So that's, you know, Wi-Fi is just ever changing. So CWMP really laid the groundwork for that, but you know, stuff is just constantly evolving in Wi-Fi. So then I use Twitter to kind of, uh, supplicant that and, and stay on top of Wi-Fi related. Uh, okay. So topics. in a real, let's go real practical. Someone who's just like hates Twitter. Like, you know, it sounds like you weren't using yeah, it before yeah. you jump on, you create a profile where now are you finding and how are you actually um, beginning to build your, your feed, your news feed, where are you going? What are you doing? How would someone get started with Twitter? Maybe that's a way to ask that question. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good question. I'm trying to think back when I first got on Twitter. I, I mean, know. It's I, once you get started. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of this ball that just keeps just rolling. Ahead. Right. But, um, yeah. yeah, I think it's just all about, you know, you start following a couple of other like-minded people of, you know, other wireless mm-hmm. professionals. And then, you know, Twitter is pretty good at, you know, Hey, you might want to follow if this person, follow this, guy, yeah. this person. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say, you know, you know, f- for example, if you, Follow myself at J O L at J O L L A at Jola, if you will. Um, I'll put that in the show. Yeah, exactly. Too. Look at who I follow, and I can pretty much guarantee you, ninety nine percent of the people that I follow, the you know probably thousand plus people I follow at this point, are you know ninety percent or more of those are Wi Fi professionals. Yeah. And I know like on uh, WLAMPros.com, we actually have like a Twitter role. And I know some of the other websites have that as well, where you can go there and say, we just have a list of a lot of people who are active and involved in Twitter. Yeah, so, yep. that's a good point. Cool. So you just get on there, you start looking and um, I guess interacting or it's a place to ask questions as well. Or just lurk, right? You know, just, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what I think a lot of people do. And honestly, the majority of the time, that's what I do. I'm just kind of I'll, I'll check it throughout the day or a couple times a week or something and just kind of see what's going yeah. on in the in the Twitter feed. And, uh, you know, I, I find out all sorts of interesting stuff on there that uh, I probably would not see. Otherwise, honestly, I wouldn't have this job at Echo if it wasn't for Twitter. Like that was a huge oh. thing for me. Like uh, I saw the tweet from UC um, and uh, in about the job posting back when I was hired on originally and, uh, you know, checked it out through Twitter. And, and I doubt I would have seen that job posting or go. ever would have, uh, you know, yeah, ever would have gave it a second thought if I hadn't been following UC on Twitter. So we started talking about this with your journey. Um, you're going through, you're having different experiences. This job comes up. Talk a little bit about making these job switches. What was going on? Why, what predicated it and what kind of gave you the impetus to say, hey, I want to check this out? Was it you want to dive into something different? Was it just looking for a change? What was that like for you? As far as when I took the job with Echo, you're saying? Yeah, like why why change a job? Yeah. Why why take that? Why make that move? Yeah, that's, what was going that's on? A, to... That's a great question because, yeah, honestly, when I did uh, apply for the job at Echo, I was not looking for another job. Honestly, when I saw the job posting, um, I, I said, hey, you know, I know some people in Wi-Fi. Um, you know, I had a job in Wi-Fi at the time. Um, and, uh, actually had just started with that company even, uh, was only with them for about six months or so before I saw that okay. job posting and, uh, read through the job description and just really liked the job description type of thing. I'm like, you know, this, this checking all the boxes of things that I, I would like to do. So you saw an opportunity that you weren't necessarily looking for, but because it came on the radar and it seemed like a more ideal fit for you is that kind of yeah and i just really like the company as well you know as a customer there's for a number of years and interact with some different people on the the support side and the product side uh prior to all of that happening and just really liked um what i saw there as a company and you know thought it would be a good fit for me to to join on so let's go back to the younger jerry yeah <laughs> uh, any advice you'd give to yourself starting out that maybe um you wish you had had or some encouragement, what would you tell yourself? 
that 10 plus years. Yeah. Ago. I mean, honestly, I'm pretty happy looking back at the journey, not to sound, uh, you know, I don't know, whatever prideful or whatever, but like, <laughs> you know, I'm pretty happy with the way the journey has gone. Um, if anything, I would say, you know, I, I should have gotten started earlier, right? Like as far as like, mm. if I would have known about the CWNP and, um, you know, known about those kind of programs as gotten started on that kind of stuff sooner, um, you know, that would be about the only thing. I mean, I'm, you know, there's been definitely, you know, certainly has not been a completely smooth ride, you know, along here, but all of those kind of bumps and challenges and stuff along the way, uh, you know, in the end, I, I've appreciated and I've learned through that. Um, I think, you know, I needed that. I couldn't just, you know, go from point A to, to point Z type of thing. You know, I, I needed those uh, steps along the way. In your kind of vantage point where you're at now, what's something you're seeing in the industry maybe that's frustrating or if you could wave the magic um, antenna? <laughs> the magic antenna. What would you change? Nice, I like it. Um, I guess, see, I don't know as far as it, in the industry. I think the, you know, I think one of the big challenges is just education um, in just, you know, looking at even my own career of just the fact that, you know, I was hired on with no knowledge and just kind of uh, given the tools and really wasn't um, given the training, you know, to, to do the job. I think, you know, I would like to see employers more, um, you know, more open to that of um, if they are going to bring somebody on that's more junior and doesn't have that kind of experience that they're going to be at least willing to invest in that person and train that person. Um, it seems like that's a reoccurring theme that I do hear from a lot of people is, you know, they're at a company and, you know, they've got to um, pay all this out of their own pocket and they don't get a lot of support from their employer. Um, and then I think we just see that a vicious cycle, right? Because they don't train these, uh, you know, these um, uh, employees, either they end up leaving or worse, they stay and they don't have the knowledge to do their job or use the tools. That the, and and the, the other thing that's frustrating is like these employers that are willing to spend all this money on tools but not the proper training to use the tools, right? So, um, yeah, they'll, they'll shell out all this money, thousands and thousands of dollars for these tools, but then don't train their staff properly how to use those tools and then, you know, wonder why their network doesn't work properly or why they can't, you know, properly troubleshoot these issues. So that's, uh, you know, I guess the, the biggest mistake I probably see reoccurring. So in your own life, is there a particular mistake or something you did that really taught you something mm. valuable you no know, you know every every design i did was perfect uh you know every deployment i did was perfect <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i think back to some of the uh, earlier you know wi-fi designs that i did when i didn't really know what i was doing and how to properly you know take certain requirements into consideration and things like that and i'm just yeah mm. i mean curious how things are going today you know a few years later or something with some of those where it's like you know i probably should have you know taken this requirement into consideration and you know that that probably would have had an impact on the overall design and um but yeah i mean overall i mean you know it's all lessons learned right i mean as you continue to learn more of this kind of stuff and mm -hmm. you know as the as the requirements change and everything that you learn how to adapt those uh, in, into future designs and future you know, refreshes and things like that, that you're doing. Yeah. Well, let's get off this deep troubling topic and <laughs> painful. <laughs> yeah. Something lighter. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's a favorite piece of equipment you're using right now besides the sidekick? Well, I mean, I'm kind of known for the whole WLAN pie thing. So I, uh, you know, I feel like I can, uh, you know, talk about that. You know, that's definitely one of the, uh, yeah. The, the toys that keeps coming back around, you know, I, that's another one of those kind of hobby things that, uh, you know, it's, it's been a useful thing, I think, to the, uh, to the industry. And I've been really uh, happy yeah. to see some of the adoption that uh, people have had with it and, and, you know, making it their own and adding different functionalities. Um, Wi-Fi Nigel, I've been chatting with him quite a bit and uh, uh, he's been doing some really cool stuff with it and uh, creating some cool Python scripts mm -hmm. to, to do different uh, useful things with it. And, um, uh, yeah, that's been, that's been really my, uh, my favorite, oh, cool. you know, kind of, I guess, little side project tool that I've been, uh, been playing around with. Has there been a hashtag start on that? Cause we probably should just to see where <laughs> they're going and what people are doing. Yeah. We've them. been using, cause I know they're selling <laughs> at the store. All the yeah. I actually set up a, a separate Twitter profile for it just because I was getting so much kind of oh, great. conversation and traffic on Twitter for it. What's uh, so it's just at WLAN So at 
WLAN okay. and then PI for, for PI, but yeah, at WLAN PI, or yeah, people have been using the hashtag, uh, hashtag WLAN PI as well, or the, the website is WLANPI.com if you want to check out the uh, instructions and part list and all Very that kind cool. of stuff as well. And just real quick, the quick summary, just for someone who's new to this or interested in maybe we've piqued their interest. What is the WLAN Pi? Yeah. So this really uh, started off as, you know, a WLPC thing, um, you know, with, with Keith and just kind of, uh, I mean, it goes back years technically, um, but you know, the specifically the WLAN Pi uh, was a a deep dive session for WLPC in in Phoenix this last year. And um, yeah, we needed to come up with a way to do uh, mobile performance testing, um, and uh, and we use this WLAN Pi as kind of the endpoint, right? The uh, the server on the network, yeah. and uh, we put a bunch of different performance testing applications in a Linux image, and built this tiny little Linux computer um, that can be portable, battery powered, PoE powered. Um, you've got all sorts, it's very versatile, right? So, and it's a Linux computer and you plug in a Wi-Fi adapter and you can do a bunch of other things with it. So it's just a really versatile box that's very compact, very portable and thinking of it for a wireless engineer, something you can throw in your laptop bag, you can take to a customer site, you can plug in anywhere along the, you know, the chain of the network there, whether you want to plug in at the head end of the network or somewhere further down the line to do some type of performance testing, troubleshooting, um, as well as uh, other like Wi-Fi analysis things with the Wi-Fi adapter running Kismet, um, Horst, which is a packet and like live packet analysis. So you can do all sorts of stuff from a, a you know kind of a wireless uh, LAN, um, yeah, a tool set goes. Very cool. And they can get them on WLANPros.com on the store there. We have them. They're back ordered right now, but we have got a bunch more coming in. So very cool. Jerry, thank you for your time and for sharing any last bit of Wi-Fi wisdom for the world. From world of Jerry. Oh man, last bit of wisdom. You know, like like <laughs> like we talked about. I mean, as far as career wise goes, um, you know, I'll just re, re reiterate the whole. Yeah, CWMP, uh, Twitter, and WLPC. Uh, if you're not on those three things and you're serious about Wi Fi, that's yeah. my uh, my last bit of wisdom. Get on get on all three of those and attend WLPC. Beautiful. Thank you, sir. Awesome. Thanks, Matthew. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Wireless Land Professionals Podcast. The podcast for wireless land professionals by wireless land professionals. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Wireless Land Pros for all the latest news and updates. And also connect directly with Keith on Twitter at Keith R. Parsons. Head over to www.wlandpros.com for this episode's show notes, as well as the latest in all things Wi-Fi.